In this lecture, we will discuss how we can use Java packages. Recall that a package is just simply a collection of related classes. We've seen examples like this before, the java.util package, for example, or the java.io package. Both of those packages had somewhat related classes in there. And what we find is, well, we're starting to create a bunch of classes. Could we put those together into some type of package? And the answer is yes. So as we're creating more and more classes, whether they're just regular classes or subclasses, we can actually create our own packages, which could be some category of a group of related classes. So we can create a bunch of classes, group them up, and then create a package based on that group of classes. And then once we've created our own package, we can actually import that package. So we can import our classes the same way that we would import any of the predefined classes. To create a package and add a class to the package, we have to do the following. The first step is we need to define the class to be public. Granted, every class we've done so far has been public. It is possible for classes to be private. We have to make it public, otherwise it can only be used within that package. The next step is we need to choose a name for the package. Uh, and we've seen pre-made packages before, like the uh, util package and the IO packages. Those are names and we have to give a name for our package as well. And it's worth noting that there has to be some folder with the same name as the package. Otherwise, this doesn't work correctly. So you're going to have to create a folder with the name of the package and you're going to have to put the classes that are part of the package in that folder. The third step is that for every class that we're going to include in the package, we have to add a particular line at the very beginning of the code before anything else happens. And that line is package and then the name of the package and then a semicolon. So what we're saying here is for every class that you want to be part of the package, the first line has to be package, name of the package and a semicolon. And then you add that package or I should say that class into the folder that corresponds to the package. Here are some very quick examples of how we would set up our code for a particular class to be included in a particular package. So the left side is going to correspond to a class that we call test1. And then on the right side, we have another class that we're going to call test2. So notice that both of these classes are public. So we took care of the first step. And then the name of this package is going to be called my package. So what we'll end up doing is creating a folder that's called my package. And then these two uh, Java files will have to be added to that folder. Otherwise, we're going to get a compile error whenever we try to include that particular uh, package. And then finally, notice that at the top of each of these classes, before we even say public class, we would have package, my package, and then a semicolon. So we just got to make sure that we include all those whenever we want to create a class that's going to be part of a package. After you created your class files, compiled them, and then add them to your package folder, we can now import the package with, from any program that we want. Now, the package folder has to be in one of two places for this to work. It either has to be in the same folder as whatever program you're using for importing the package. So whether it's the client program or some other program, or it has to be in the Java class folder. So if you, if you remember when you installed Java, there are a bunch of files. There's a class folder in there somewhere that has all of the pre-made classes that are associated with Java. So if you can put it in there, that works. Otherwise, you would want to put your package folder in the same folder as your client. I'm going to suggest for now to put it in the same folder as your client. It's a lot easier as far as trying to include your package. If you can find the, the place in the Java folders to include your package there, go for it. But I'm finding it easier just to include it in your current folder as your program. Now, once you've done this, you can just include all the classes from your package by using the import statement. So using our earlier example, we can just say import my package dot star and then a semicolon at the end. Notice I didn't say import Java dot my package dot star. The Java dot other packages, those are the pre-made uh, packages from Java. If you're dealing with your own custom package, you don't include Java dot in front of it. It's just the name of the package dot and then whatever class that you want. 
Let's go ahead and do an example of creating and importing our own packages. So what we'll do here is we'll just create a couple of classes. Um, there'll be test classes that don't do anything too special, but we'll have some variables and we can set it and get the values of them. And then we'll create a program where we would actually import the corresponding package. So the first thing we have to do is include the package at the top for any class that's going to be part of the package. So we'll say package, and then we'll say my package, and then we'll create a class. I'm going to call this test1. This isn't going to be anything special. We're just doing this for demonstration purposes. Uh, so let's say we have some variables. We'll do x and y. We need a couple of constructors. So we'll do a default constructor. Do x is 0 and y is 0. Then we need a constructor with parameters. And in here, we'll create another method that actually lets us set x and y. So I'm just going to call that set x, y and pass a and b. So we'll do public void set x, y. And here's where we'll set x to a and y to b. And then we'll have some get methods or accessors. So we'll do get x, which we need to make sure it returns an integer. So return x. Return y. All right, looks good. Let's go ahead and save it. And now what we're going to do is we'll create our second class. And I'm just going to make it the exact same thing as test1, except I'm just going to call it test2. Usually when you're dealing with different classes in a package, they're going to do different things. But we're just demonstrating some things so we can have both classes do the same thing. We just change the name. All right, so we'll save that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close both of these. And I'm going to go into the folder where they're saved. So that is right here. And I'm going to make a change. And we mentioned before about where we should have the package. We mentioned that we should have some folder uh, with it, or we can put it directly into our Java files. Well, I don't know exactly where we're going to put it in our Java files over here. We're not going to worry about that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to go new folder. And this needs to be the same name as the package. So I'm going to do my package. And I'm going to put both test1 and test2. I'm going to cut. And I'm going to paste in here. And then inside this folder is where I'm going to create my client program that's going to import the classes from the my package package. So now we'll create a test program. So first I'm going to do import and I'm going to do my package. And I'll do dot star. So that means I'm importing everything from the my package package. So now we'll create our class. We'll call this uh, my program. And then we'll have our main. And then we'll just go ahead and start creating a couple objects of both of our classes. So we'll do test one, we'll call it T1. New test one. Maybe this will use the default constructor. Then test two, new test two. We'll pass some integers. And then we'll just print out the contents here. Do print test one. And let's do t1.getx plus. And then concatenate t1.gety. And actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this for the second one, except we'll just do test two. That looks pretty good. So we'll save that. So now, if I compile, this should work. So let's make sure it works. OK, compilation completed. So we imported uh, everything from the test1 and test2 classes. So if I run this, let me move this up here a little bit. Sure enough, test1 prints 0 and 0, our default constructor. So our default values for x and y. And test2 does, in fact, print 1 and 2. And that's how you create and import packages.